Hi everyone, it's Christy, and in this video I want to explain how Bering punked his fans. There are three videos planned for this series. The one that I'm going to do today is the first one, it's the setup, it's the easiest to do. It's Bering vs. Occam's Razor. Before we start the video, I just want to note that Bering went on the record saying that he thought that libel was a bad thing. Basically, it's yeah, shutting down. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's, it's libel. It's their libel laws. So libel is a bad thing. It's not, not a good thing. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to, to, to be libelous. Like, that's... Yeah, like saying someone's a rapist and then revealing it on, on the news, and then it turns out he's not a rapist. Now you could sue him. That's totally fine with me because that could ruin someone's life. And Despite this public statement, Bering went on hypocritically to make false accusations against feminists in order to dupe his fans. One piece of evidence that shows us that Bering knows that he went too far in his accusations is the fact that he changed the title of the video after he got some criticism. The initial name of the video, as you can see, was called Bering Finds Out Who Doxed Him. When that proved to be a little too hard to actually sustain because there was no evidence behind it, instead he tried to throw Tim under the bus by creating a new title that read Bearing Docs Drop, Timmy Boy Spills the Names. Let's go ahead and watch the specific accusations that Bearing made against Danny and me to help highlight the points, I've gone ahead and put the text in the screen so that you know what you should be paying attention to. Hello. You might recall a video that I published yesterday in which I asked Tim, also known as Demotivator Opinions, for some names. Since I published that video urging Tim to give me the names of those conspiring to dox me, an interesting conversation has taken place between Tim and Bearing Cab. Now when I refer to my doxing, I'm talking about my private details being published on a well-known drama website infamous for not only doxing, but also for spinning fake stories designed to tear down their subjects. Now the person who actually uploaded our info to this website is this guy, and it looks like he does this kind of shit regularly, but who gathered all of our info and delivered it to him? Well this guy's tried to throw us off the scent by publicly thanking Kevin Logan, Demotivator Opinion and Chrissiosity for the information on sugar tits, but they didn't have anything to do with it. Quick question bearing, how do you know with certainty that they didn't have anything to do with it? What evidence are you using to make that claim? And can we all see it and evaluate it for ourselves? That seems fair and rational and reasonable. So back to this conversation between Tim, aka Demotivator Opinion, and Bearing Cab, in which Tim actually named those I was asking him for yesterday, the names of the people who orchestrated this whole thing. The people who gathered up all of our private info and put it in the hands of this serial doxer and shitstirrer. Those names were Danny Courts and Christy Winters. I approached him in order to have this confirmed. He was out at the time and couldn't really talk, but I can't be fuck spending any more time on this. I'd like to get back to making videos about real stuff and not this petty shit. Let's just restate this. That Bering, to his 300,000 plus subscribers, said that Danny and I had been the people who had orchestrated this whole thing, that we were the people who had gathered up all of his private info, and that Danny and I put it into the hands of a serial doxer and shitstirrer. Is there any evidence that the person who created the entry needed our help or received our help or had any communication with us whatsoever? Let's take a look at the evidence. It's important to point out that Bering had already come to the attention of the people at Encyclopedia Dramatica because of his association with a thing called Be Candid. And if you read the entries on Be Candid at Encyclopedia Dramatica, they don't like it, they're not happy with it, and they don't like the people who tried to promote it and, as they say, shill it. Already knowing who Bering was, then, we can connect the editors of Encyclopedia Dramatica, in this case Cobalt Cat, with very specific information about Bering that preceded his entry being created on the 6th of December. I'm going to use this excerpt from a video that I've redacted and put on my channel that goes through the timeline in a very systematic way. During a hangout on October 8, 2016, Bering's first name is said on a hangout he did on his channel with the creator of the app Candid. While this video is now gone, we see the first evidence of Cobalt Cat ET as they upload a mirror of this video to their own channel. 
people begin making videos about Baring's first name, including Mike Barbarossa and Atheism is Unstoppable on their respective channels. On the video made by Atheism is Unstoppable, someone by the name of Terry Mackin McKenzie fully doxes Baring and has a few opinions on Baring's band, no credit. On November 28, 2016 the mention of Baring's actual name appears in a Kiwi Farms thread by someone who appears to be linked to Cobalt Cat ED. On December 5, 2016 Baring's channel disappears from YouTube after the creators of Total Drama Island file copyright claims over the use of their material in Baring's videos. As per the history page on the Burring entry on Encyclopedia Dramatica, on December 6, 2016 at 2.01 p.m. someone by the name of Cobalt Cat E decretes the Burring page. Another key point to remember here is that not only did Burring help in his own doxing by confirming the name of his band to his fans in his comment section on his channel, He's also provided people with very specific personal information that could be used to identify him by someone like an editor at Encyclopedia Dramatica. First of all, hello, Baring, is that how you pronounce your name? Yeah, man, yeah. 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 <laughs> and is that like your last name or is that just a handle? No, it's, uh, it's been my nickname for about uh, 10 years, man. And are you anonymous? No. Uh, no yeah, yes, and, yes and no. And are you anonymous? No. Uh, no, yeah, yes, and yes, and no. And are you anonymous? No. Uh, no, yeah, yes, and yes, and no. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, fuck, but, um, so you won't tell me your name? I, I can't call you by your real name. My, my name is my name is Patrick. Really? But, hey, Dusty, Dusty. Up until yeah. March of this year, I, I was an associate director for for a multinational company, earning fucking six figures, man. I, I was a a, a, a professional. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I quit that to, to do my channel and I took a massive pay cut when I did it. I've, I've, I've managed to, to, to catch up now, but I mean, why would I do that? Why would I, why would I quit that sort of job just to. Cause working for other people it. sucks. I imagine you want to do something better where you can work for yourself, right? Well, well I, I, I originally did work for myself and I sold my business to this, this multinational company. So. So you work for yourself now? Is that what you're saying? Are you work? I can't hear you. Well, do I do now? I'm a YouTuber now. Mm -hmm. And you work for yourself well, before too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I had my, my, my own, my own, I had my own business, and I, I and I sold it. To, I sold it to a large company, and 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 was taken on as an associate director when they bought the business. That's right. As you can see, Cobalt Cat mirrored the video doxing Baring's name in October. Cobalt Cat had doxed Baring on Kiwi Farms in November, and then wrote the entry about him in December. Yet Baring thinks that Cobalt Cat is too incompetent to have doxed him by himself. Well, the people at ED don't take Baring's claims seriously at all. In fact, they mock him and they just keep trying to troll him because they find him so laughable. In this entry, they specifically mock Baring for thinking that Danny and I would be needed for them to make their entry. And what's this in the lower right-hand corner? Oh yes, it's a screenshot they put up with the following caption. Baring admitting that Christy and Danny did not dox him. Baring says in this comment, I didn't state it was a fact that Danny and Christy doxed me. I stated it was my opinion. Baring goes on to write, I also stated evidence was probably insufficient to prove. Well, if the evidence is insufficient to prove, why did you make the accusation? Why not wait for more evidence? Why jump the gun and ruin somebody's reputation without any basis for doing it? Here are the editors at Encyclopedia Dramatica laughing about the extra drama Baring has created by falsely accusing Danny and me. Cat kills Bear. Squeak, that Baring page has over 7,600 views and counting. First you bring us Poison Ivy lulls, now this. Good showing. Apparently ED is now part of the conspiracy to dox and smear Baring's name simply for writing a satirical article documenting his ongoing drama and everyone on ED is an SJW according to Barry. He tried vandalizing the article again last night and on Twitter. He's also been trying to use the girlfriend looks 14 joke you made to make anything and everything about him seem to be a lie. You really struck a nerve with this one. Interesting that they made the joke about your girlfriend being 14. It was sarcasm and you didn't catch that, Barry. Hmm. Someone else goes on to write, Lull, yes, agreed. If nothing, it definitely caused a lull's shitstorm. 
plus the article turned out to be pretty good. And Cobalt Cat takes Baring's quote of serial doxer and shit stirrer and writes, I am writing this on my business card. Encyclopedia Dramatica is a place where internet drama is recorded. If it were the case that Danny and I had gathered up a bunch of Baring's info and handed it over to this person who's called Cobalt Cat, surely exposing us as the sources of the information would be just as much fun and lulls and drama for them as anything else. Yet that's not what they're doing. Because that's not what happened. They're taking credit and high-fiving each other for trolling Baring and for being shitsters because that's what they do and that's what they did. Now, this isn't the only video I'm going to make on this topic. I have two more videos planned. The first one where I take on Baring's allegation that my use of a screenshot puts me at the ED website when it was first launched. I will be refuting that assertion. And the second one has to do with Tim's private conversation and the comments that he was referring to. That will come out in part three. It's now time for people who claim to be reasonable and rational and led by evidence to ask themselves which is more likely. That Cobalt Cat, who mirrored the docs of Baring's first name, who actually doxed his first and last name on the Kiwi Farms website, and who was the creator of this page and took credit for it, did exactly that, or that, without any evidence, Danny and I somehow gathered information and handed it over to this editor, and the editor did not expose us or the fact that it was feminist who handed the information over. Again, it would make for great drama if Danny and I had done this. But we didn't. And that's why there is no evidence linking us to this doxing. Because we didn't do it. And Baring knows who did it. The question is, why is he accusing us and not the person he knows is responsible. That's going to be it for part one of How Bering Punked His Fans. Check back here for parts two and three in the near future. Until next time, I've been Christy, you've been awesome, and we'll see each other again really soon. Bye-bye.